to my channel. Today's video is going to be a really fun and hopefully educational and helpful video to any moms out there, babysitters, or just people trying to look for different activities to entertain their toddlers. I'm going to be sharing five different sensory play activities and busy activities that are going to educate your toddler and also help them learn and explore and play imagination. But I really hope this video inspires you to do some of these activities with your toddler. And if you guys like videos like this, please make sure to give me a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this. And also if you're new here, welcome. I would love to have you stick around and subscribe. So make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. I am a mom of one toddler girl she is two she just turned two in December and sensory play activities are by far my favorite activity to do with her and she responds really well to them so we're constantly looking for new ideas and different activities so anything I don't share in this video if you have something that you love doing with your toddler comment down below so we can try it out here at our house the very first activity I am sharing is DIY colored beans. All you're gonna need is a bag of uncooked beans and then some food coloring. Add a few drops of food coloring to each little pile of beans and mix it up and then let them dry for at least 24 hours. So this is something you will wanna prep ahead of time. I made the mistake and added way too much food coloring to my beans so it took extra long to dry and also some of the food coloring came off on my daughter's hands when she was playing. So definitely be aware of that. I also wanna note a few things. A lot of my inspiration for these activities comes from new trick kids on Instagram. I'll be sure to leave their Instagram handle down below so you guys can click on their Instagram and get even more inspiration. They're amazing. I absolutely love following them. And the second thing I want to know is a lot of these activities require small pieces and even if you think your child has overcome the oral fascination phase, please make sure that you're supervising this activity 100% of the time. Dry beans can be a choking hazard along with some other activities that I share in today's video. So I just want to throw that disclaimer out there and just please make sure you are always monitoring your child no matter what during sensory play. That's a lot of colors. Feel free to get creative with this activity and let your imagination soar. There's so many different things you could do with this. You could color sort, you could use different objects such as cornmeal, pasta, rice, water, chickpeas. We are actually working on scooping and pouring, which Scarlett loves. She could do this for hours. And we're just using these little utensils from Your Little Dove, which I'll link down below. They're just little wooden scoops and they're perfect for activities like this. You don't have to use scoops like this, get creative. You could use something like a measuring cup from your kitchen or a little plastic cup or a spoon. The next activity that I'm gonna be sharing is something that I kind of just made up on my own. This is gonna be an Easter inspired activity and you're gonna need some kind of eggs. I actually have these that I bought off of Amazon. We've been playing with these since Scarlett was under a year old. She loves these. They're great for so many different things such as hand and eye coordination and number matching. And anyways, this is gonna be a very simple and not a very messy activity, which is nice. So I had a bag of Easter grass. I put it in a little bin and I broke apart all of the eggs and just kind of hid them in the grass and she's kind of on a little sensory bin Easter egg hunt. She's gonna have to find all the colors and put them together and it's just gonna be a really fun and simple activity. If you're not familiar with what sensory play is, basically it's any activity that stimulates your child's senses such as touch, smell, taste, movement, balance, sight, and hearing. And so whenever your child is exploring sensory play, it's really important to get down at their level and help facilitate exploration and naturally encourage your children to investigate and play and create and explore. So that's another reason why I love sensory play with Scarlett. That's just a great time for us to really learn in the moment and use our imagination and just have fun and be silly. And this is a fun part of having a child, is just seeing their little brain work and seeing what new things they can come up with. The last thing we did with this activity is we actually broke out our Melissa and Doug cleaning set, which Scarlett got as a birthday gift from one of our friends. And she is helping clean up all of the Easter egg grass. And this was perfect for some extra sensory play and some sporadic sensory play that was not planned. But that's the fun part of this, is you can literally make it what you want it. The opportunities of sensory play is endless, especially in a child world. 
This was one of my favorite activities that I did with Scarlett and this came straight from New Trick Kids. This activity I am making rainbow bubbles. So all you're going to need for this activity is a blender, bubble bath, and food coloring and then some kind of tray to put all the bubbles in. In order to make this all you're going to do is add 2 to 1 ratio of water to tear free soap or a bubble bath in a blender or a bowl. You could use a hand blender as well. And then you're going to add a few drops of food coloring or liquid watercolor. Blend on high or use a hand mixer until the mixture becomes thick, not watery. What's there? Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is rainbow foam. In this activity, you could do whatever you want with it to meet your child's needs. It could just be bubbles if they're younger, or if they are a little bit more advanced and older, you could add something like Legos to it and they'd have to wash the Legos off. In our case, we decided to add some sea creatures. So I threw all of the sea creatures into the pan with the bubbles and Scarlett had to reach into the bubbles and find all of the little sea animals and then she would wash them off in a separate bowl. The next activity I am calling a squeaky clean seashell activity and this could be done with things other than seashells. You could use rocks instead but I have seashells because I picked these up for my daughter when my husband and I went on our past getaway to the beach. So these have kind of a special meaning behind it. But I am just going to take some silly string that I found in the Target dollar spot and I am just going to cover these seashells in this silly string and get them nice and messy. And the whole point of this activity is going to be to clean off all of the seashells and scrub them up and get them nice and squeaky clean. So for this activity, you're going to need some kind of rock like a seashell or just a regular rock. You're going to need a way to get them dirty. You could easily go outside to your backyard and grab some dirt and throw some dirt on these. Honestly, don't overthink it. But if you have something fun like Silly String, use it. You could also spray whipped cream all over it, um, although they may want to eat that. But I'm just sharing different ideas. And also, we have this little scrubbing brush that came with a play sink that she has, but you could also use something from your sink too. <laughs> <laughs> the next three activities are going to involve pom-poms and this is where I started to get carried away because there were so many ideas and uses for these pom-poms that I just had to include a few extra activities in this video even though I said I was only going to share five. This is for the big pom-poms. You put them on this piece of paper and you put the little palms on this paper. Is that a big one or a little one? Yeah, just set it right down here. You could set it right there. Oh, look, Scarlett. There's a little one on the big one. Where does the little one go? Right yeah, that's where little ones go. The point of this activity is to really encourage your child to learn the difference between big and little. The next activity I'm going to share with you is super simple as well. The point of this activity is to teach your child and help them identify different colors and also work on their matching skills. All you'll have to do is use some markers to draw different colored circles on a piece of construction paper and then encourage your child to put the light colored pom-pom in the circle. Super simple, super easy. The final palm activity that I'm going to share, I'm calling windy palms, and all you're gonna have to do is use some painter's tape or just some kind of colored tape that you can use to really identify some kind of a line. And then you're also going to need some kind of straw and then your pom-poms. You're gonna put it in your mouth and you're gonna blow it across the blue line like this. See, can you do that? Can you blow it across the blue line? Good job, you did it! <laughs> you wanna do another one? Believe it or not, this simple activity such as getting a child to learn how to blow through a straw can be great for developing language and so much more. This next activity is so much fun. I love playing with kinetic sand and I actually found this kinetic sand that resembles dirt. 
So it's like a plater is what they call it. Basically it's kinetic sand except it's a different color, the color of dirt. And all I'm going to do is just add some fun little toys to this. Um, we have some random dinosaurs. All of these barn animals actually came with a barnyard set Scarlett got for Christmas. But you could just throw in whatever you want into this little activity and let them play and explore and have fun. Scarlett decided she did not want to play with the animals at first. She wanted to build sandcastles. So we were building dirt sandcastles. These little cups came with a bear set. Um, I will link those down below because we've loved playing with these bears for sensory play as well. But she likes to use these to build sandcastles and so that's what we ended up doing. The fun thing about sensory play is you can really let the child be in charge. Oh my goodness, it's all over your head. I need peanut Castle. You're making a sand castle. Wow. Let's see it. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. That's all right. You could try it again. Yeah. Let them use their imagination, and it doesn't have to be a strict activity. It can be as creative as you want it to be. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed and got some inspiration and ideas from these sensory activities that I shared. I know I shared more than five, but that's just because I had too much fun doing this video and creating these activities for Scarlett, and I wanted to share more than five with you guys. Once again, I get a lot of my inspiration from New Trick Kids, so give them a follow over on Instagram. Their handle will be linked down below. The other thing I want to mention, I'm not an occupational therapist. I have not uh, gone to school for this kind of stuff. This is simply self-taught stuff, and my experience from working in the behavioral health field with children so that is where my information comes from and just also just self-research that I've done on my own I also am very intrigued by Montessori learning and that is something that I love so that is where I get a lot of my information from but if you guys want to do your own research feel free there is so much information out there in regards to sensory play it is such an amazing way for children to learn and I'm so incredibly passionate about raising my daughter that way but don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this if you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here and that your bell notifications are turned on and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.